got all the shock absorbers fitted. The only thing I still need to do is the is to put the lower pins. So um, that's just one thing that I still need to do on that. But uh, aside from that. It's looking good. Right, so another thing I've done is started looking at heater options. Now, you may remember that uh, originally when I had the 109, that came with the round Smith's heater, obviously pulled apart, um, and the 88 came with no heater at all. But it did come with the existing holes to fit the uh, Smith's heater in there. Now, uh, I gave it a very good clean and then subsequently it started to leak. There's about three, at least three holes in it. And of course also the, you can see how that's all corroded and starting to fall apart anyway. So the fins aren't much use anyway. Now, these suckers here to get a replacement is about uh, $600 Australian. Which is absolutely ridiculous for uh, for just a heater core. Uh, in terms of the rest of the components, they're um, pretty much in standard condition for the age. I'd never had any issues with it. Uh, the motor works fine. Again, nothing wrong with the motor, so it's all good. However, because spending six hundred dollars on a core is um, ridiculous in my opinion I wasn't going to go down that way so I started keeping an eye out for alternatives and this sucker came up so this is a Smith's Beehive or well, they call it the Beehive type heater again I've just pulled that apart because I want to paint the paint the brackets uh, the core is in really good condition um, virtually no damage at all aside from a little bit down the bottom here which I'm not sure if you'll be able to see but um, I've already gave it a bit of a clean up. That's why it's looking a bit shiny. Um, but no leaks on it, so so that's fine. The actual housing, there's no cracks in the housing, and the fan motor, of course, works. You can see it's pretty original. So the intention is to put the beehive in. However. I do not want to start drilling new holes in the firewall, so the idea is going to be to modify the the core inlet and outlet hose, uh, pipes so that they I'll have to put like a bit of a 90 degree bend so I take these ex, extra bits off, these extra lengths off I think you can see probably here that there's a join so maybe around that area put a 90 degree elbow in and then effectively try to put or continue the pipe so that it exits in more or less the same location that this one does. So basically using the existing holes for the feed in and feed out. So that's that body of work. The other thing I need to do then as well is to make use of the current brackets that I have course these will go back in place but to make a base if you will another frame behind it which then utilizes the same holes that the original smith cedar used which is um, basically the um, the mounting points for the for the fan motor so that basically gets mounted against the firewall uh, via the backing plate here so you've got one you've got these holes here which corresponds to the holes in the back here okay so that sticks out that way anyway I think you get the idea so with um, with those two modifications I effectively should be able to replicate this area here so I'm going to be using this as a template and that'll mark where I need to have the frame put in and where I need to have as I said the inlet and outlet um, pipes for this one. 
So yeah, happy, happy as with that. And of course, I only spent a fraction of um, what I need. In fact, this was pretty much close to an aftermarket heater unit that you got off from eBay. So I figured, why not stick with an original Smith's? Bit of a gamble when you're buying, you know, used bits. But um, I try to, yeah, as I said, stick to to original where I can. So this thing here will go just be be in the back burner. I'll just store this away. Um, eventually, I might see whether or not somebody can make up another heater core, you know. But again, not an urgency. This will be uh, an ongoing project. I'll probably do that slowly over time. Nothing too, uh, nothing too urgent on that. So this is the original, again, the original position of the Smith's heat up. Just get rid of that. And you can see there the three mounting points and the two inlet and outlet for the, um, for the heater core. So um, as I said, I'll be replicating some brackets here to fit to the, to the uh, beehive brackets, mounting brackets and modifying the core as well. All right, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, so... Uh, wiring is at the top. So effectively, um, with the core that sits inside this square cavity here, it's actually almost a perfect fit. If I was to say, looking up here, to fit it about there, that might actually work. So that'll look look good. Of course, it's going to be sticking out a bit because that's how they sit. Um, but that's that looks to me very doable. Something else that I've put in, which I can't remember if I um, I included in the previous video, but this is the number plate holder that comes with the this kind of drop down tower gate. Um, because the idea is, is as you drop the tower gate, this will flip up. And um, oh, just do it. Let's just do it. So when that comes down like that, that is going to retain position somewhat there. It's still not quite right. It still doesn't, let's put a bit of light on you. It still doesn't sit 100% straight. You can see how it doesn't kind of fit down all the way here. So what I was thinking of doing is I might actually put something like a magnet or something equivalent to be able to just hold that in place while the tower gate is down and um, and of course then when you put the tower gate back up it just sits in the right position again now funnily enough here I actually bought <coughs> another light unit here and um, <coughs> excuse me uh, this this light unit here the, the, the housing is made out of steel and the actual glass in here is actually glass. It's not plastic. Um, you can see it says made in England. So that's another little job. Wiring just comes down across here and under the under the tub, and it feeds into the um, into the wiring that operates the. Uh, the um, park lights. Also, just a bit of maintenance. I've just replaced this filter. These are very easy to do. You just buy the same brand, or sorry, not the same brand, but obviously one that suits the um, housing. And the way that I do this is I don't bother with the drain plug underneath because you've got to replace the unit anyway. So it's just a matter of undoing this top bolt, which actually comes through and joins up with a, with a shaft inside the bottom plate. And um, you just pull the whole lot out, put the new uh, filter with the new O-rings, another one on, on the top here, put it back together and it's as easy as that. So that's the filter. I'll show you the sedimenter. Now the sedimenter on mine, I've put that under here. You can see that there's the housing on the top there with the bolt there. 
Okay, it's dripping out because obviously I've taken it out. And the sedimentary is effectively just a, uh, a, uh, a unit that collects, I suppose what you call large impurities, including water. So I've pulled mine apart already, as you, obviously, as you can see, and I've already cleaned it. But I thought I'll show you um, what it looks like. Okay, so here we have the sedimenter in a few pieces. That's the bottom bowl there, and there's a drain plug. Again, uh, I was actually fortunate. I was able to take this off very slowly and replace the O-ring. Uh, but, but really what you should do is just pull the whole lot out anyway because it's going to be full of crap inside there. And you can see that um, there is nothing in there. There's no filters, no nothing. It's just basically a huge... Um, uh, void there to collect um, large impurities like you might have sand in there or water etc and then on top of that comes the intermediate or I suppose the intermediary unit which sits on there in there and then on top of that comes the umbrella and that sits in there there's a particular position that sits on the cradle there nice and perfect you can see how there's those recessed cradles there. And I've got the new, that's the, that's the uh, washer for the top where it meets the housing. And then I've got the other washer here, or I should say a seal, that um, creates a, a tight fit in there. It doesn't leak. So that's that's all there is to it. There's nothing really inside it. You just pull it apart, give it a good clean, and then um, put new seals in it and put it back together. And that's all there is to it. All in position now. In the sedimenter and a new filter there. The last thing to do was to bleed the uh, the lines so that there's no air in the diesel lines. And the way to do that is you just use the lift pump, and it's going to be hard to demonstrate here, but um, the lift pump is the one down there where my finger's pointing at. There's a little lever in there. You just pump that lever. It feeds uh, fuel through the through the lines. And then while you're pumping, you undo that screw, that one, and that one there. Those two there. So you've got that one there, you crack open, you let it uh, bleed until no more air comes out, and then you do the same for the other one down there. And then you should be right to start it. So a little bit of TLC, a bit of maintenance here and there, but I think we're um, we're getting very close now. I don't have to worry about it. And, and um, what I've done is I've done exactly the same process with my uh, 300 TDI Discovery 1, where I've replaced the front fuel uh, filter. It's a different type than this one. It's a, uh, it's a screw-on one, almost like an oil filter. But I'm yet to do the uh, sedimenter on the, on the rear of it, which pretty much will be the same as this one. Just pull it pull it apart completely and um, put it back together after cleaning it with new uh, O-rings. Alright, well I'll leave the video at that and um, hope you find this one interesting. But um, I'll keep uh, the updates coming as, as I get parts and so on as I've said before. Um, in the meantime, if you've got any questions or anything like that, um, put them on the comments. Happy to always uh, look at those and respond to those where I can. Until next time, thanks for watching.